Well, I'll even turn on the projector. For a while, I didn't think I'd need a projector on today <laughs> because nobody was here. I'm glad you're here. All right, and we'll go from current slide. As soon as the projector comes up. Um, other announcements, I don't know of any major ones. I don't know why this didn't go from current slide, but we'll go it again. Ah, there we go. All right, here we go. Um, the uh, one I've announced before, I uh, don't see a poster in here or anything, but NASA sponsors a NASA Computer uh, Community College Aerospace Scholars Program, NCAS, okay? And it is one tremendous program. And they are now taking applications through the 15th of May. So you've got plenty of time to work on it uh, if you're interested in pursuing that. The people who have participated in it before, we've just had a few from Austin, they have loved it. You actually get to do things that interact with stuff happening in space. It's really an incredible program. So uh, if you want to check that out, you can go online and, and check out NASA Community College Aerospace Scholars Program, NCAS. You'll probably be able to find it. I have it on my desk in the other office, I mean in the other classroom, uh, my classroom, not this one. Uh, the flyer on it has a website, but it, I think you can find it. But if you can't, find it there. Okay, I don't know of anything else major. Uh, except, I'll say this for everybody, but maybe you too, I've only received from this class probably a few fewer than half of the research papers. Don't forget the research paper. Uh, quiz one, I have only missing one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, need to get those in. And then, of course, those people who haven't done test one, but there are some others who have either done it or completed it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen 10, 11, 12, 13 total there. Ah, double the class size. Way to go. All right, good deal. All right. Huh? Brianna, Brianna got it. Just finding you as the issue then. Your eyes are not, there you are. Not getting on the right line is the next issue. Good deal. And I uh, can't remember, you do know that Honors and Awards Day is today, and that means the class ends at 9. <laughs> okay, good. Don't try to be so disappointed. Okay, I'm <laughs> just kidding. All right. Uh, so those are the major announcements. Let's get on with it. And I was just saying, uh, quiz two, I've been receiving those, maybe more than a third of the students maybe have turned those in, uh, and then test two will be coming up soon, because this is uh, chapter two, polynomial and rational functions, section 2.6. The last section we're going to do in chapter two is rational functions. What does rational mean? What's the first five letters of rational? What does that spell? Ratio. What's a ratio? So ratio. Division of two numbers. Okay. Numbers, but these are functions. So now it's the division of two functions. What kind of functions? Polynomial functions. The ones we've just been doing in the last five sections. Okay. So what we'll do for these We'll find the domains of the rational functions. Remember for polynomial function, what's the domain? All real numbers. For any polynomial function, ratio. Not so for rational function. Why? What do you have down here? Denominator. And you have some values for x, possibly, that could make that denominator zero. You have to exclude those from the domain. So therefore, you may have to consider other domains for rational functions. Numerator, all real numbers, but denominator, because some of those numbers could give you zeros in the denominator, you have to exclude those. We'll find vertical and horizontal asymptotes for the graphs of rational functions. Dead giveaway here, the vertical asymptotes occur 
where that denominator is zero most of the time. Okay, uh, there are a few exceptions, but not many. The horizontal asymptote goes back to what we first studied in our polynomial functions in behavior. What's happening in the long run? Where is the function going? Okay, that's what a horizontal asymptote is. So we'll talk about that. Sketch the graphs of rational functions. If you thought this book was not going to sketch graphs, wake up because it's sketching graphs everywhere. Sketch graphs of rational functions that have slant asymptotes. We're going to skip that sort of. I'll talk about it, but we won't do anything with that. And then we'll use rational functions to model and solve some real life type problems. Okay, so, so much for introduction. What is a rational function? Like I just said, the ratio or quotient of two polynomial functions can be written as f of x is equal to n of x over d of x. Now, where did they come up with those names for those functions? Numerator function and the denominator function. And they're polynomial functions in the numerator and denominator. Now, remember, a polynomial can be as few as one single term. One, seven x, x cubed, square root, not square root of x, that wouldn't be a polynomial, okay? So n and x and d of x are polynomials, and d of x is not the zero polynomial, because you can't ever have zero in the denominator. But some of the x values could produce a zero there, then you have to exclude them from the domain. In general, then, the domain of a rational function, okay, where do we start? We start assuming all real numbers, unless, hey, look at this. Increase the class size by 50%. Okay. Carlos here. Trying to find you here. All right. Now, just talk about what is a rational function. Uh, it's a ratio of two polynomials, so a polynomial in the numerator, polynomial in the denominator. In general, the domain of a rational function includes all real numbers with an exception, except for those x values that would make the denominator zero. Okay? If that polynomial in the denominator has any zeros, and for the last several sections we've been finding zeros of polynomial, you have to exclude those from the domain, because otherwise the function would go to zero there and you can't ever divide by zero. Much of the discussion of rational functions will focus on their graphical behavior near the x values excluded from the domain, okay? And if they behave in one way, that's a vertical asymptote. There is another way they could behave in that case. We'll, we'll see what happens. So here is a very simple rational function, okay? Remember I said a polynomial function can be as few as one single term. It could be a single number, like 1, or a single variable, like x. Or it could be a polynomial, or it could be lots of other uh, polynomial functions, but this is a simple one. So find the domain of that. What do you reckon the domain of that function would be? We'll start out assuming all real numbers, unless... Yes, so therefore, x can't be zero, right? Because then you'd have zero in the denominator. So the domain is the set of all real numbers such that uh, x is not equal to zero. So here's one way to express that. Let me get my pen set up. Okay, now y'all have to, oh, I've got my watch here. Help me keep track of time because I, at 9 o'clock, I've got to go. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, I, I don't know why I hadn't thought of this before, I don't know. Why in the world do we have Honors and Awards Day on a Thursday morning? Why not Friday? There's hardly any classes on Friday. Friday morning would be fantastic. I'm going to be suggesting that loudly <laughs> as much as I can. They want to keep their free day. Huh? They want to keep that Friday open. You know, For Friday what? Yes, but you lose instruction. And what are we more interested in? What are you paying money for? Okay. Yeah. But you see, these decisions are made by administrators. They want the free day. So if they wanted to. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? Okay. 
That's what you meant, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought it was. Okay. All right. So we could say the domain of this function. I'm just going to write it this way. This isn't a standard way to write it. Domain of f of x, in this case, would then be the set of all x's such that x is not equal to 0. Every other x will work. So frankly, I would just say x not equal to 0. You don't have to do all that other stuff, but technically the domain is a set, so this is the best way to say it. Now if you use interval notation, how would that go? All real numbers start at Yes, negative infinity. Okay. Up to? No, because you have to exclude zero, but not include zero. So you put the parentheses there. And then union that with from zero to positive infinity. You got it. Okay. There it is. Because the denominator is zero when x equals zero, the domain is a set of all real numbers except x equals zero. That's how they set it. Okay? Now, as they said in the slide before, a couple slides ago, they said a lot of our activity is going to be figuring out what happens the closer you get to those excluded values. Okay? So let's get not too far from zero, like negative one. Well, when you put in one over one, or one over negative one, you get negative one. Okay, so that's not bad. Let's get a little closer to zero, go halfway, and that'll be negative one half. Well, one over negative one half is negative two. Do it on your calculator, you'll see that. One divided by negative one half is negative two. We'll just get a little closer to zero, like negative one tenth. And one over negative point one would be negative ten. And one over Negative one hundredth, get even closer, is negative one hundred. Negative one thousandth would give you negative one thousand. Guess what that's going? Shoom! Downhill fast. Okay? So that's approaching negative infinity. Okay? Well, let's look on the positive side. Okay? Now they start down here. If they started here, you wouldn't even go down there. But at one is one. One over one is one. One over point five is 2, 1 over 0.1 is 10, 1 over 0 0.01 is 100, 1 over 1,000th is 1,000. So that's going to positive infinity. The closer and closer x gets to 0, the closer, I mean, the bigger and bigger that number goes. Going to positive infinity. You can put as many decimals out here as you want to, and for every one you do, you put another 0 here. And it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? Now, how do we express that? Do you remember when we were talking about n behavior and polynomial functions? We use the same type deal here quite often. We've said the domain, so we've already said that from minus infinity. No, I'm sorry. Well, that's for the x values. Here's another way we say as x is approaching blank. F of x is approaching blank. And then as x is approaching, I'm sorry, I can't write, blank, F of x is approaching another blank. If I had planned ahead, I'd have gotten it better. Okay, and what you put here, you have your non-allowed value where it cannot be that value. Okay, so what you put in the first place is as x, sorry, as x approaches 0 from the left-hand side, okay, as x approaches 0 from the negative side, where is f of x going? Negative infinity. You see that? As x is closer and closer to 0 from the negative side, then the f of x is going to negative infinity, getting incredibly large negative. And as x approaches 0 from the positive side, then f of x is going up really high. Okay? So that's po approaching positive infinity. So that's how we usually refer to the functional behavior 
behavior of the function near the excluded value. Approach the excluded value from the left, see what's happening. Approach it from the right, see what's happening. And usually it's going to a plus or minus infinity. Okay? There will be a few rare cases that it won't be approaching an infinity, but generally it will be. So it's a, you find the excluded value, then you approach that value from the left and the right, and it doesn't matter which order you do it, and then see what the functions do it. Usually it's going to an infinity. Okay? Sometimes both going to positive, both going to negative. Doesn't have to be opposite. Okay? We'll see examples of several of those. Okay? So here's note that as x approaches uh, zero, the disallowed value. Remember how they said in uh, Mission Impossible. If you are captured or, or whatever, then the, the secretary will disavow any knowledge of your activity, okay? Well, here we're going to disavow any knowledge of your activity if you get close to zero, okay? So if you get caught being close to zero. So as x approaches zero from the left, x decreases without bound, meaning it's going to negative infinity. Contrast as x approaches zero from the right-hand side, now increases without bound, okay? And that gives you an uh, idea of how to draw the graph. Now, they haven't said it yet, but they're going to very soon. I'm going to go on and say it now. Okay? Notice here, there is a line, of course, where x cannot be, and that's at zero. And when x is equal to zero, where are you? When x is equal to zero, where are you? x equals 0. See, here's x equal 1, there's x equal 2, where's x equal 0? The y-axis, right? Okay, yeah, that's what that was about. Okay, the y-axis. So I'm going to put the y-axis, a dotted red line there. Now, the reason I chose red and dotted, too, is you can't go there. Don't touch it. Don't even get close to it, okay? I mean, you can get close to it, but don't touch it. And you see the Closer and closer you get to zero here, the bigger and bigger that is, and the closer it gets to zero, but never gets there, okay? And the same down here, the closer you get to zero from the left-hand side, the negative side, then this gets closer and closer to zero. Uh, it, it's going to negative infinity the closer you get to zero, okay? Bigger and bigger and bigger numbers. Now, what you also see here, and we're really jumping ahead here, is you have a horizontal asymptote because now this deals with the end behavior what happens if x gets very 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 large negative okay one over a very large negative number like one over negative 10 was no i'm sorry i said that backwards yeah well yeah uh x is going very large okay yeah and what's the f doing if, if x is very large, like minus 10, that would be 1 tenth, okay? Negative 1 tenth, okay? If, let me get my pen back. I'm jumping ahead, so I really should, probably shouldn't do this, but I'm going to. As x is approaching, say, negative 10, f of x is going to negative 1 over 10, because it's 1 over x, right? Okay, well, that's a pretty small number. Well, let's go x close to negative 100. Then where does the f of x go? It's actually equal to negative 1 over 100, which is a really small number. And x going to negative 1,000? Then it's negative 1,000. So the closer you get to, the larger and larger the x is negatively, the closer it is to getting to zero, but it never gets there. Always stay slightly below that. Same thing here. As that gets larger and larger and larger, I can't go any larger because the chords are here, but if I could, it's getting closer and closer to zero. So, hey, good deal. All right. All right, they keep coming. All right. Darius is here. And... H is here, but I've got to find... There you are. Okay. All right, excellent. Now, I sort of hate to say this, but I hope you knew this already. Uh, do you know today's Honors and Awards Day?
Okay, and you know I have to leave at nine o'clock, ten minutes from now. Okay, so I'm glad you're here. Okay, so I'm going to record as much as I can. So here we have another way we can talk, just like we did in behavior before, and this is as x now is approaching blah, f of x is approaching blah, and as x is approaching blah, blah different blah, okay, uh, f of x is approaching some blah, maybe same or different, okay? Now, in this case, since we're talking about in behavior, where is x going? Negative infinity or positive infinity? That's just like we did before. As x approaches negative infinity, and it doesn't matter which one you do first, you can put those in. As talk is in behavior. And this one, where is x going here? I mean, f of x is getting closer and closer to zero. But on the positive side, over here, it's getting closer and closer to zero on the negative side. So this would be zero and zero. So we just determined our horizontal asymptote. Now I'm going to put this in red too, but there's a little difference in horizontal and vertical asymptotes. I'll go on and explain it to you, but let me get it in here in red. There's your horizontal asymptote. Oh, get out of there. Okay. Okay. Goodness, let's get back here. Okay. Get back here again. Okay. The difference is the function can never touch or cross a vertical asymptote, ever, because that's the place where the denominator would be zero. It can't do that. On a horizontal asymptote, yeah, it can touch it, cross it, whatever. This just tells you what happens in the long run, where it's going after a long, long time. It could actually be doing this, but getting closer and closer. So it can cross it as many times as it wants to, touch it as many times as it wants to, but in the long run, it's going toward that number. All right. So I jumped ahead. Sorry about that, but no extra charge. All right. Any questions? Okay. And what you do to determine horizontal asymptotes, and this, this problem is sort of dumb, you look at the ratio of leading terms, which is, that's the whole thing, 1 over x. Where is that going when x goes very negative or x goes very positive? Okay. So let's get our pen back and go to vertical and horizontal asymptotes. What a clever place to put them. Okay. Vertical asymptotes are where the function can't go as x approaches one of those zeros for the denominator, horizontal, what happens in the long run, the end behavior. So in example one, the behavior of x near x, behavior of f near x equals zero is denoted as following. Ah, just like I did, only they put the f's first, I like to put the x first. It doesn't matter. I started with as x approaches zero from the left, f of x is going to negative infinity. It doesn't matter which way you put it, it both is true. And as x approaches zero from the right, f of x is going to positive infinity. So that's how we define the activity near the zeros of your denominator. That's how we do it. A lot like we did in behavior for polynomial functions. Okay? The line x equals zero is called a vertical asymptote. Okay? And in general, in general, not always, but in general, when your denominator has a zero, those are going to be your vertical asymptotes. I'll tell you the exception a little bit later. But that's going to be your vertical asymptote. So where the denominator is zero, x equals zero. That's where your vertical asymptote. Notice the sound effect there too. Okay, I'm going to put it in red again. That's your vertical asymptote right there. Can't ever touch it. Gets closer and closer to it, but can't touch it. Okay, vertical asymptote. All right. Now from that figure, you can also see this figure, that there is a horizontal asymptote, just like we did on the last slide. Okay? Now, what that is, whoops. Okay. Horizontal asymptote, the line y is equal to zero. Now, this one you can say is equal to. For the vertical asymptotes, I like to say not equal to. Remind you, you can never touch it. But this is the horizontal, you can say y is equal to zero. You can say it that way. The behavior of f near y equals zero is denoted as follows. Just like I did on they put the f's first, I like to put the x first. As x approaches in behavior, negative infinity, you always know what these are when you talk about horizontal asymptotes. One's going to be negative infinity, one's going to be positive infinity for x. Okay? Now, what is the function doing there? It's going 
to zero in that way, zero that way. Zero from the bottom here, from the top there. So it's, uh, oh, and goodness, yeah. Yeah. They don't mess with putting the signs here. X going to negative infinity, then F is going to zero. X going to positive infinity, X going to F is going to zero. Pressure zero as X increases or decreases without bound. Okay. Now, here are your definitions of vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Okay. The line X equal A, that's X, go on the X axis equal A, that's going to be a vertical line. It's a vertical asymptote of the graph when F of X approaches infinity or negative infinity as x approaches a from either the left or the right. That's what denotes a vertical asymptote. Okay, just like we said. If you find those values which make your denominator zero, most of the time those are going to be vertical asymptotes. Okay? The line y, uh, y equal b is a horizontal asymptote. That's find the b on the y-axis, positive or negative, wherever. Draw a horizontal line there, a horizontal asymptote. When this is the case, as x approaches uh, positive infinity or negative infinity, if f is approaching that number, either direction, then that's your horizontal asymptote. Now, eventually, as x goes positive or negative infinity, the distance between the horizontal asymptote and the points on the graph must be approaching zero. The difference between the horizontal asymptote and that. I don't know why they put that there. It's a little to me a little confusing to put that statement in, but it's true. Okay. Now, I've sort of said a couple of things here. They're doing mostly from the graphic side, but we usually see the function side. So let's see what we can figure on the functions. Okay, this is just these again graphs. Okay, and this one, what's your, here's your function. f of x equal 2x plus 1 over x plus 1. What will determine your vertical asymptote? What can you never do? What can you never do? Divide by zero. Okay, so in other words, this is how I do it. The book doesn't go into this detail, but it just makes so much sense to me. Do this. I think I'll get my pen back. Okay. Look at that denominator, x plus 1. That cannot equal 0, right? Okay, then solve that inequality. Subtract 1 from both sides, and you have x cannot equal negative 1. And there you draw it in. Find x equal negative 1 and dot that red line in there. You see? That's exactly how you find that. Okay? Most of the time. He'd say most of the time. At some point, we're going to have an exception. Okay, now how about that horizontal asymptote? The horizontal asymptote, here's the thing. We haven't gotten there yet, but I'm going to give it to you now. Look at the ratio of the leading terms. And what is f of x? Remind me, what is f of x? Y, of course. That would be y is equal to, and what's the ratio of 2x over x? Ratio of 2x over x. Let's write it. 2x over x. Oh, two. two, exactly. So y is equal to 2. There's your horizontal asymptote. That's exactly how you get it. Okay? So, vertical asymptote. Denominator can't equal 0. Solve that inequality. That gives you your vertical asymptote most of the time. Okay? Horizontal asymptote. Look at the ratio of the leading terms. Leading terms, you have to put them in decreasing order of the powers. Ratio of the leading terms. Reduce that and see what you get. In this case, y is equal to 2. So there you draw the lines, and then this one goes like this, that goes like that. Now, if you want to describe that as x is going to, is approaching negative 1 from the left, from the minus side, f of x is going to positive infinity. As x is approaching negative 1 from the right-hand side, from the positive side, x is going to, f of x is going to negative infinity. Or if you want to write your in behavior, as x is going to negative infinity, f of x is approaching 2, y is approaching 2. As x is going to positive infinity, f of x is approaching 2. Okay? A 
that's how it works. Now, let's take a look at this one. Have we got time? Huh? It's nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Sorry about that. Oh man, it irritates me no end. Okay, especially now that I've thought about it. Why aren't we doing these? So we're going to look at the B one here. It's not called B, but it's I'm calling it B. The second one there, and that's where we'll start. Well, actually, here's what I need to tell you. Okay, I'm going to stop this and start. Looking.